Hey there tubers. I'm doing a video today on block heater installation on my CT5555. Uh, I had a viewer about a year ago uh, request a block heater installation video and I had already had the dealership uh, install it on my previous one uh, at purchase so I couldn't do it at that time but with this uh, new tractor uh, they did give me a block heater and I just told them hey, I'll install it myself that way I know it's done right and I can do a video about it so uh, Bobcat offers two different block heater kits the thousand series has their own and the rest of them uh, use this one it's a 7388933 and basically in the box here you get uh, instructions, the removable plug, the heater itself, and the block bushing. So they're a pretty basic uh, installation kit here. And what you do is uh, you come down here on the left side of the tractor by the starter, you'll see three soft plugs and you can choose whichever one you want uh, to install it on I plan on using this front one here just uh, I think it's more convenient uh, for access wise but uh, the one in the middle is not horrible I would probably never use the one in the back but uh, yeah so basically what I'll start off doing is uh, draining the radiator and to do that you gotta come over here on the right hand side of the tractor and tucked up underneath here right in there is the uh, drain plug for the radiator of course it's in a convenient location and uh, even if uh, you did everything properly it's going to come out it's going to drain onto the axle and then down so what my plan is, is I'm going to try and wedge a funnel up in here and get it to come down into this bucket. Now the system holds 11 quarts. Um, and I think really by the time you drain this down to just below the frost plugs, eh, it'll probably be two gallons or so, maybe a little more. Uh, you don't have to drain 100% out, just get them below those uh, soft plugs and uh, you should be good to go. So I'll get that draining and then uh, once I get that down to what I think is appropriate, I'm going to probably stick a screwdriver or something through that soft plug and uh, try pulling it out and then uh, go from there. So uh, I'll get to draining here and I'll see you shortly. Well, once again, Bobcat engineers need to uh, punch right in the head. This is ridiculous. That's how much I caught. The rest of it went on the ground. This is the most ridiculous spot I've ever seen for a drain. There's no real way that you can capture it. So, I guess uh, for any of those that are planning on doing this, a huge drop pan and just plan on throwing the antifreeze away because by the time it washes over the axles and everything else it's going to be so contaminated you don't want to put it back in anyway but yeah I just thought I'd show you what uh, stupidity once again Bobcat has been alright so that took a little more time to get out than I was hoping for but uh, Still took me about 20 minutes. What I did is uh, they recommend you take a drill and, and drill holes in this and either use a sledgehammer or a pry bar. But uh, I didn't want to drill it because uh, I didn't want to get any metal shavings inside the block here. Now the bottom of the water jacket is right here so uh, I guess if you did drill it you could theoretically get uh, 
probably the majority of those filings out uh, by just sticking a rag in there and cleaning. And I stuck a rag in there and as you can see there's still a lot of sand from the casting process in this block um, but uh, since I'm basically putting all new antifreeze back in it uh, that should help out. So uh, when I pulled that out there was this red uh, uh, I guess it's probably thread locker um, completely around this plug and that is what they do recommend putting the new plug in with and they recommend this uh, 609 uh, retaining compound is basically what it is um, it was a little harder for me to find this I went around town and I couldn't find anybody with it so I ended up ordering it off of Amazon uh, I can throw a link down below and if anybody's interested in it um, but this is what they recommend so what I'll be doing is I'll put it around this area here and then uh, I'll get that in there and my thought right now is uh, using this 15-16 uh, deep set uh, heavy wall and I'll just uh, get those lined up and I'll tap this one in but uh, that's basically the next process so I'll uh, put some compound on it uh, get it lined up uh, and I might throw some emery cloth in there just run around it real quick uh, to make sure that there's no burrs or any crap in there and then uh, I'll slide that in so I'll be back shortly all right so I got that cleaned up I just put some of that compound on I guess I was thinking it was going to be red but it's not it's green so I put a uh, liberal mount on there and I'm gonna get this placed in here and see how uh, well it fits that's a pretty snug fit so uh, yeah I'm gonna get that uh, this is gonna take two hands so I'll try uh, pounding that in with that uh, socket and uh, see how she goes all right so funny story I went to put uh, the bushing that came in the packaging in and it didn't fit this side was substantially smaller and this side was substantially bigger so I thought I was uh, missing something and uh, ended up calling the uh, dealership of course they verified that the part number is correct and uh, said they had another kit in there so I decided to run in and see if there was a difference and sure as heck there was so on the piece that I had previously this was one inch this was inch and three-eighths which is surprising this is uh, I would have thought this is all metric stuff but uh, the soft plug that I pulled out of there is inch and a quarter so after talking to the uh, service rep guy he was like it can't be wrong it can't be wrong until we opened the box and looked and sure enough it was wrong so this should be the right one. I'm gonna. Oh yeah, it's a snug fit. So that should be the ticket. So I'll put some of that uh, compound on here. And I, I was about to go nuts there, uh, trying to figure it out. And luckily they did have one, so uh, they just swapped it out. All they can think of is that uh, the one inch might have been the one for the 1000 series but uh, it was put in the wrong box so we're gonna give this a shot be right back okay put some of that compound on there 
uh, I think this is the right stuff. It's the right number anyway. It's just an off-brand. It's not uh, Loctite, but uh, I'll get this uh, tapped in there. It's going to take uh, both hands, so I have to put the camera down. All right. She slid right in, just like it should be. Nice and snug, but not too snug. And uh, I got that uh, collar right up against the block here. So all I got to do now is get some uh, pipe tape on the threads here. Get that in and just uh, thread it in like so. Plug the other wire in and uh, fill her back up. So uh, get some tape on that. Get that all put together and uh, I'll be right back with you. Okay, so I got that threaded in there. Uh, inch and an eighth wrench will uh, fit that just nicely. So I uh, got her all nice and snug. And the next thing to do is take this end of the plug and just uh, push it in, just like that. Now what I did learn on my last tractor was not to just leave this thing like that all the time because uh, I came out one morning plug it in this was gone so this thing just comes slides in and out really easy so I ended up having to buy another one just for the cord and so what I do from now on is I'll put a zip tie right here hold that sucker right there and then hopefully I don't lose it but uh, I'll uh, throw some antifreeze in it and let you know just how much it took and uh, go from there. See you in a bit. Okay so I added right at two gallons. I'm gonna fire this thing up and uh, let it warm up, get the thermostat opened and uh, let it circulate a bit and then I'll recheck it. I'm sure I'm gonna have to add a little bit more but uh, just rough ballpark is around two gallons drains out below uh, the plug there and uh, should be good to go got my zip tie on got everything washed off uh, while it's warming up I'll check for leaks and uh, yeah that's it in a nutshell so theoretically uh, if you have all the right parts and kind of know halfway what you're doing this is about a 30 to 45 minute job uh, the biggest uh, hassle you'll have is the cleanup from the, the antifreeze and uh, if you have a way of catching all that then uh, eliminate that part of it. The next hardest thing is going to be getting that soft plug out. What I ended up doing was uh, using a ice pick, punching a bunch of holes in it to kind of weaken it so I could get a uh, pry bar in without uh, pushing the soft plug in too far and uh, popped it right out so yeah and uh, at this point I should probably give some kudos to the the dealership I've been pretty hard on them over the last year or so and uh, when I called them told them what was going on they they're like no nope, nope you got the right parts um, we'll send a guy out to to help you get it installed and uh, they were uh, within just a couple minutes of sending one out when I decided well I'm gonna run this part in and just show them what I got uh, so I don't waste their time but uh, they were willing to kind of jump through hoops uh, to get somebody out here real quick for me uh, I can only imagine that uh, they have kind of the reverse wanted poster in the office there with my face and it says not wanted uh, just because all the hassles we've had so but uh, they were uh, Johnny on the spot to, ready to help me out so uh, I will give them kudos for that but uh, anyway if you have any questions or comments uh, leave them below otherwise I'll talk to you later bye bye